Um, welcome to Crip Chat. I'm I'm so excited. Uh, it was so interesting earlier today. Well, not earlier today, like an hour ago. I posted on my IGTV uh, about I'm doing the Shaped by Disability um, campaign, I guess, where I express how I feel disability has enhanced who I am as a person and and my life experiences and. Had I had it not been for the disability, I probably would not be the same person. And I was talking about empathy today, and it just it flowed. I didn't wasn't even planning about talking about Crip Chat, but it flowed. I'm like, you know, we created this space, um, and empathy really is about creating a safe space where people feel like they can truly be themselves. And I feel like. Crip Chat is a testament to that, and this is like empathy at work, right? We're there for, um, we can be empathetic, empathic for our struggles and our triumphs, and I am just so grateful. I know I say it a lot, but you can't say it too much, right? You can't say how grateful you are, um, and I'm just so grateful for this community we've created through Crip Chat, and um, I look forward to how it develops um, over time. It's only been since April. So it's still young. And I feel like we have created something really special here. And I'm really excited that um, people are stepping up. And um, I'm really, I really want to create the space where people can feel like they can have their own voices heard. Like this is not my platform. This is ours. So um, we've had already Tylea, John Wood, Priya Ray, um, Hannah Kennedy. We've had a variety of topics discussed um, by guest hosts who are facilitating it. And I'm so excited, Jessica. And Jessica like always shows up for my lives. I don't know, like you must be attached to your phone, Jessica. I'm not really sure, but I'm like, oh my God, there she is again. Thank you. When you're doing it, but I, I just, when I see it, I'm like, oh, well, because you're like, leave a comment of this. And I'm like, okay, I will. <laughs> I so appreciate it. yes and you're always commenting and and that's important too um, that's, that's how I support because if I'm not there live I'm like oh, yes no 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 I just and I don't expect everyone to like be there live because not everyone's attached I'm not I don't even have my phone next to me it's in the other <laughs> room um but you know like I just seeing the patterns but I, I did um put it out there in regards to empathy and how this community really is a living, um, I don't know, like silo of empathy. So um, Jessica came to me and, and asked if we could talk about <clears throat> acceptance, self-acceptance. Um, and Jessica has been here, for those that, uh, um, that are new to the group, Jessica has been here also since the inception of Crip Chat. Um, and I'm so excited to, uh, have, have her here and, and, um, she is not a shy person. So mm -hmm. I don't, I feel like she doesn't need an introduction and this will be one of many, um, and anyone that wants to host again, right. Jessica expressed that she'd love to host, you know, many times over. So don't think <laughs> it's like a one and done thing. You are all welcome to I ask it to do a bunch. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love I, it. I was like, should I ask to do another one? Like, I was like, but, I'm, but you know, not that I'm shy, but I don't know. I'm Indian. So we're all like, you should ask permission. <laughs> like, no. Well, and you know, I didn't even think about like throwing it out there. Like, Hey guys, do it again. If you want, you know, because unless until Jessica said, Oh, I plan to do a lot more than this one. Um, so, you know, she, she threw herself out there and so it made me like oh maybe i need to like be clear that if you have more than one um time that you would like to be a guest host or talk about anything please feel free to volunteer um and i know cecil's next week um and i'll be in touch with cecil um this week about uh you know identifying well we we kind of chatted a little bit about what you're going to talk about next week um, but we'll, I'll cook up with you later on to, to get that and put together the marketing stuff for that. So I am going to just step aside and let Jessica take the reins and I'll mute myself. So yeah, go ahead, Priya. 
So I am going to do this event at this, uh, this art space that asked me to be the part of their advisory board. So we're going to do it on July 30th. And I was like thinking, what should I do? Cause I was going to ask performers, but then it was like too hard for me to find performers with this. And then, you know, people, you know, it's kind of a late start to plan this event for the 30th anniversary because all the people have already been busy doing other things. But, um, my idea is to is that the theme is that in history historically the narratives of disability have never really been there's not that much narratives about disability so i'm going to make it an evening of people with disabilities sharing their stories so it's kind of an open format so like i i'll I, be I, there i would love you know all of you guys to be on it just you know i'll right. be there I know you'll be there, Ty. I wasn't even, Ty, I was like, I already have you on the list. I was like, okay, John and Ty are going to do it. <laughs> so I already have you. Don't forget about me. I have you. <laughs> I you and you were mentioning. So yeah, any of you, I would love to have Freddie and Cecil and Pauline. Like if you all wanted to take part in that, that would be great. It's going to be on a Zoom thing. And the other guy that has the guy who's going to technically handle all the technical parts and I'm gonna I guess I'm gonna be the host and be like next is blah 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 you know this and stuff I'll be more than happy to write something up for you for that yay awesome and I asked I, I asked a bunch of people and I asked Molly and Aaron if like I'm telling people you can either video ahead of time or be part of it live whatever you want to do whatever is easiest for you I don't want you know I don't I want everyone to be a part of it and and I'm well, I guess you should do is 10 minutes because they don't think it because it's like a, either a 60 minute event or a 90 minute event but depending on how many people I get and how long everything oh, is okay. I don't know how long the event will be like 60 or 90 depending on just show me an email of what you need and you got it yeah. girlfriend you got it dude yeah. <laughs> I'm going Michelle but, yeah, Tanner all, all like I actually, you know, in the chat, I will include my email so you guys have it. So email me after this and we can, you know, then, you know, get. So I would love Freddie, Tylea, Jessica, Pauline. Did I name everyone? Oh, Cecil and Jewel. Cecil and Jewel. Yeah, if you want to. Do you just email me? I put my email in the chat and Cecil, I have your phone number, so I'll just text you my email. So what is it that okay. you're looking for? I don't know. I'm kind of like playing it so I, every day. I'm like, you know, do this. Yeah. But I'm just looking, I, I really want it to be whatever you want. Like for me, I'm maybe I'll share a story of how I was denied access because of my disability and what, you know, kind of, I think we should kind of relate it to what, how important the ADA is, but how much work still needs to be done type of thing. That's what I'm going to do, but I don't know. I feel like we could all do something about that, but. I'll write a poem for it. Okay. Yeah. That'll be great. I figure I could be creative. Yeah. I yeah. Have... I want people to be creative or do however they want to do it. I don't, want to tell people how they should do what they want to do but yeah so i'm just thinking a poem would be fabulous ty okay so jessica i'm gonna hand this back to you i'm sorry for blah, blah, blah. oh no you're fine i'm actually waiting for tanya to show up um oh, okay. she's yeah she's trying to get on um oh, is there anybody in the waiting room pauline no Girl, I love the way you rep that crib shirt, Jessica. <laughs> the what shirt? Oh, yeah. The crib shirt. <laughs> oh, the, the tank top. Girl. Yeah. I know, like, I tried to take a picture of it, like, with me wearing it, and then, but it, like, it, it turns out backwards. Like, the, the wording turns out backwards. I'm like, that that really makes no sense at all. <laughs> so, <laughs> They're, like, perk. Everything backwards. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, um, so yeah, I was like, ah, screw it. Like, I'll just like take a, like a body shot. So it's okay. I just figured out how to do my own selfie. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> like, 
my first <laughs> my first full body selfie in 25 years i finally got it to work with the wheelchair and everything <laughs> that is like now my profile picture on facebook i'm so proud of it oh is that the picture with you look so beautiful with your hair all flowing the one that you're looking at the camera and smiling i was like that's such a nice picture of Tyler. yeah i mean because your hair is down and stuff. so it's And like, I'm holding the phone and I'm like, yes. And my mom's like, you did what while we were in the mall? I said, I sure did. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> hmm. I wonder what her issue is. She's like, don't start without me. I'm like, I will try. Like, you can <laughs> like we could all stay here for two hours. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> If I could have crib chat every day of my life. Right. <laughs> and Jess, you need to call me. Call me. Because sometimes I, I call know. you. Sometimes I, I call Jess and she's like, I'll call you back. But then she forgets. Yeah. Comes with the territory. Don't we all do that? Hi, Leah. Yeah, we all do that. Even I do that, <laughs> Jess. So don't feel bad. Yeah. Uh, I know. Like, I was at my mom's, and then I'm like, she was on my ass about being on my phone. I'm, whoa, my wow, my cats are weird. <laughs> like I always call Jess at the wrong time. Okay, let me see if there's someone in the waiting room now. And there's no one in the waiting room. That's so oh, weird. I told her. I told her well, cause. I said, I said, you know, just click on the link in the chat, and the the link that you sent, Pauline, mm -hmm. it was going back to last week's. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah that's why I was thing, having issues. The same thing happened to me, and I was like, oh. So how did you guys find this link, then? I email. That's what I did. I clicked on the email, and it said, like, um, the host is you know, in another meeting and it, like, I noticed the date, it said July 4th and I'm like, okay, that doesn't make any sense. Oh uh, yeah. The one I, I had trouble last week, but I, and I wasn't paying attention to what day it just I did was I didn't click on the link this week. Like I did last week, this week, I just took the number that it comes with the zoom meeting. Yeah, that and I copied and pasted it in the correct area, and I, I didn't have any issues with it. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think I, Zoom's having issues. But yeah, we're going to blame it on Zoom. It's not my fault at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, I clicked on the link, and I, it got me here this week, though. So I don't know what's up with that. Weird. I think it yeah, is I, Zoom. Because if I've we all had any issues until now. And, if we all clicked on the same link and they had trouble and I didn't, it is Zoom's fault. It is. Thank you, Priya. It's like, <laughs> it's like Zoom's like, I'm tired of everybody using yeah. all these. I'm tired of you people. Let the pandemic be over. So right. <laughs> it's like, no mas, no mas. Well, I'm not really sure. Are you texting her or do you want to? I think I'll just go ahead and get started. Um, okay. Yeah, because it's already, we got like 34 minutes. Um, well, we have till 1230. So I usually do an hour and a half. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, I guess I have an hour. <laughs> no pressure for you just to do it, like, right? You're, everyone else can part partake. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for letting me um, host this week. I've been looking forward to it all week long. Um, and I'm so glad that you guys are here. Um, I think this is a topic that, you know, needs to be talked about a lot more. Um, of course, a lot of topics need to be talked about a lot more. Um, but my, qu like my first question to all of you um, how does, um, self-acceptance affect your quality of life? I'll go first. I'll let you just... I thought there was another question. Okay, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Well, I, 
Well, I feel like for years it affected my life because I wasn't happy with the body I had or the fact that I had scars or the fact that I had to wear AFOs. But eventually I just said, screw it. This is me. This is Ty and I'm beautiful. So it took me time to realize that. I think when I was 18 is when I finally was okay with the person that I was. So, yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah. Okay. Who wants to go next? <laughs> My next I, victim, please. I'll be your next victim. I I don't think Yay. I really <laughs> think I like self acceptance. I mean, it's always like kind of just growing up, you know, and you know, like I, you know, I had the typical Indian mother that was like, oh my God, you know, she, she, I remember all my childhood yeah. and teen years, she would tell me I was overweight. And then, then when I actually got older and was a little heavier, I'd look at pictures of myself and then I'm like, oh, I wasn't that, I was kind of skinny. What's going on? So, so like, I always had like, self-image problems because of that because Indian moms I was telling my friend yesterday in Asian moms or Indian moms are very like they show love by criticizing you that's like how it is it's like <laughs> love isn't always I'm <laughs> sorry to laugh <laughs> but that's so <laughs> true <laughs> oh my god well if that's the case I should be like Indian or Asian because that, my mom loves <laughs> to do that <laughs> but yeah so I, I because like my friend was like she's dating this Asian guy and he's like yeah he criticized I was like that's just how Asian people are that's how they show love I was like I was like, love is always pretty and kind. Sometimes it can be mean and, and horrible. <laughs> so, you know, so my mom, so like, so by the time I became disabled, I'd already kind of broken away from that. And I don't know. So I didn't, I never really had self acceptance problem after I became disabled. I was more like, why? Uh, why aren't they ready for me? Why, are, why haven't they thought about my me coming in a wheelchair? What's wrong with these people? You know, so I was always like very demanding and being like, you know, like friends would text me and be like, oh, there's a show happening. And I'd be like, is it accessible? Or there's, you know, like, and they wouldn't write back. And I'd be like, well, that's just rude. So, you know, like I just got more <laughs> frustrated that people weren't like recognizing I'm disabled and including me, but it wasn't really that I came down on myself for being disabled. I was more like, I'm disabled. Why the ADA is here? Why aren't the, what's going on? So that's like my story with that. So, you know, but self-acceptance is a work. It takes work. You know. It um, does. Definitely. Telling yourself that those things, that are bad about you or the negative things other people say to you are actually true like you have to kind of push those thoughts out of your head and not dwell on them which i don't know we all do but it's not you know it's not like we're human that's what we do we self-criticize yeah. yeah we are we are our own worst critic. I always get tongue tied on that. <laughs> well, that's there's that's a saying, and there's a reason that's the same because people do it all the time, right? So. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So glad to see you, Tanya. I literally just got started, and you popped up, and I was like, "Well, damn, now she's got to introduce herself." <laughs> I know. Well, okay. So, well, my name is Tanya Davis. I'm from Iowa. Um, I uh, have been disabled for, well, I don't, you know, I want to say I've been disabled all my life, <laughs> but um, I was in a car accident. I lost my arm. I uh, worked for, um, well, I worked for uh, our sheriff's department here in the county. I was recently terminated. Um, I was in a car accident, lost my arm. I don't know if I said that or not, but um yeah, I've been really going through some, uh, a, uh, I don't even know what I can say, you know, because I think at work, I was treated like, um, you know, I, 
went back to work, you know, I needed my work to, you know, just to, for self-worth. Right. You know, and I feel like I was, you know, I was just as good with one arm as I was two. And, um, but, you know, I had a lot of issues, you know, I mean, that changes your life completely. I was, I'm really oh. thankful that, you know, I was older, you know, I was 40. I had a nice family, you know, it would have been different if I was younger, probably. But, um, you know, my work just kind of treated me like, well, you know, it's been, it's, it's been three years, she should get over it, you know, and it's like, when you become disabled, you know, that's like for the rest of your life, you know, like, my arm's not going to grow back, you know, nope. and, um, you know, and I, I think that, uh, well, I know that they turn, I think that they terminated me because, you know, I, I've been there for 10 years, my administrator's leaving, I have enough knowledge and experience to step into that position, you know, and, um, yeah, I just, you know, I'd never been written up. I'd never been in any trouble. I've always been a great worker. And like for the last seven years, you know, they've been on me about my attendance and it's like, okay, so when I was first in my accident, you know, I broke my arm. Well, you know, they didn't know that, you know, I broke my arm in two, you know, it was like a rubber band, you know, so they just, you know, people are thinking that, you know, I just broke my arm and, oh, you know, I'm taking advantage of this and I would go back to work so then I could work up to have more leave time, you know, and for the last seven years, I've never had a vacation. I've never had anything because I've had to work up that leave to have a, another surgery you know and um i finally decided to have my arm amputated and um i had to have both my hips replaced and when i had my arm amputated they're like you know they gave me the option to be this jail clerk and they gave me an office in the basement which was great but you know people the lieutenant in the jail she was jealous of that she was jealous of the fact that I had my own office, you know, and I'm like, well, I'd give my left arm, you know, <laughs> just to have an office, you know, yeah. I mean, wait, you know, it's like, I just lost my arm and you're going to be jealous because I have an office, you know, and I love my job. I love my job. And I just, it's been such a struggle. You know, and um, I think when I was in my accident, I always knew that I would lose my arm, you know. And, you know, everybody, all my family, you know, they were, and everybody thinks that, oh, well, we're going to be positive, and oh, no, you're not going to lose your arm, you know. And when I decided to get uh, my arm amputated, my daughters i have two daughters and they were so supportive and they're like we are going to support what you know mom does and um you know they were really supportive but it's just been hard because you know i don't think that i've ever really even had the time to um grieve losing my arm you know like you know, you think, oh, well, oh, all right, you know, I'm going to have this surgery, you know, and I'm going to have some time off and, oh, I'm going to go to the boat and relax on the boat while I, you know, rehab and stuff. And, you know, it's like, no, it was never like that, you know, because it's like, oh my gosh, right. you know, I have a, you know, I have a, 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 a wound vac, you know, on my arm or whatever. I mean, and it, and I think that the people in my work just kind of minimalized that. And then when I decided to um, amputate my arm, well, they had sent me a, a notice saying, you know, that if I wasn't back to work at a certain amount of time, that um, they were going to fire me. So, wow. So I called this lady at the um, sheriff's office 
because she doesn't want us to talk to HR directly. She wants to be the HR of the sheriff's office and she's the one that screws the sheriff. So anyways, <laughs> it's a big <laughs> long story, but, and I'm so sorry for my, you know, being, I, but whatever, I don't care. You're, it's true. Oh, honey, so, don't ever apologize. You're fine. Don't. So you have to I, apologize for. <laughs> so I called her and I told her, and, you know, I called her and I told her, I said, you know, I said, I just called Aaron at HR. And this poor lady at HR, you know, I just told her, I said, you know what the problem is? I said, is that you people thought that I just broke my arm. But I didn't just break my arm. You know, I said, I broke my arm off. It was hanging like a rubber band. You know, I'm like, and I'm, you know, try, trying to save my own life. And, um, and I said, and, and you guys, they just, made it like it was no big deal but then once i had my arm amputated they were like oh ooh, you know and it's like i don't know i don't even know what to say i'm just so disappointed you know and they were with me but when i came back to work they were like uh because i worked in the jail you know so i've done everything from you know sweeping the floors to you know uh, booking and releasing inmates, doing court documents, doing, I mean, everything. I've done everything. And they um, switched me to a jail clerk. I had to take a cut in pay because um, I was not qualified to be a clerk. And I thought, they have no idea what my history is or what kind of work I do or anything like that. So I had to take a cut in pay. Um, I have IPERS. I don't know if you're, you know, IPERS is like in an, um, a retirement plan or whatever. And the county will like, they'll like pay for, you know, like I pay in so much, the county pays in so much. But if you're like a, in a special class, a protected class, like the police officers, you know, if you're like in a dangerous profession, they took that away from me, but I still had to go in, you know, into the jail. And, um, It's just been really hard. And I think that a lot of them, since I lost my arm, you know, because I just, I'm the same person, you know, it's not like I'm like, oh, you know, I lost my arm or, you know, it's just like, I'm still the same person that I was before. And I think that they see that. So they think they like see that in me and like, I'm not disabled and, you know, like, you know, like, why are you trying to use that as an excuse? You know, or why are you, you know, it's like, I'm not sure really how to explain it, but it's just awful. I experienced that too, because, you know, because I became disabled when I was 29. And so um, a lot of people that knew me before, when, you know, my 20s, and then I became disabled and I'm, you know, like I'm pretty cheerful personality and even though places aren't accessible and I'm not really a hundred percent comfortable there because of the space. Cause you know, when you're in a wheelchair spaces does become an issue because then you're like yeah. running everyone over. So, you know, but I, I just never really talk about it and just like, you know, I just want to have fun. And, but then I also found that people also aren't they don't get get it that like you're in a wheelchair and it is difficult for you to do things yeah. and they don't understand that because you're not complaining about it and you're you know they expect you to be in this like they expect disabled people to be like uh sad and you know feel sorry for me and what you like, know can you help me <laughs> help me I lost my arm what do I do now like they want you to they want you to be a person that wants pity or something instead of a person that's just dealing with it and trying to live life basically yeah you know I mean and it's like we're just trying to survive right you know right. I'm just trying to live like I could give it I could care less if I have zero legs and arms you know right. I just want to live you know, and I want to be, and even before my accident, it's like, I want to leave this world knowing that 
I left it a better place. You know, even though like me personally, I might not change the world, but at least I know that, you know, I did good things and, you know, just, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's been, you know, it's been a big deal, you know, and, and I just kind of, I always look at it like it was making me sick, you know, trying to save my arm. It was just making me sick. And I'm like, I don't look the same. I have gained weight. I have, you know what I mean? And that is kind of hard because, you know, I was so sexy before. <laughs> <laughs> I was a wood hot bitch before I acted it. But you know, I mean, and it's just like I like her. <laughs> you know, it's hard. You know, and, and it's just like I just wanted to do right and I wanna, you know, my job gave me self worth and and I'm like and now I'm I don't you know, I mean but I'm on my next chapter, you know, I'm I'm definitely uh you know I'm well, done with that. I wonder if that has to do, like, going back to the whole self-acceptance topic about, um, you know, I, and so I was born without arms and legs, so I don't know what it's like to have and then lose, um, you know, other than, like, you have, like, maybe losing a person in your life, right? So loss is loss, and um, we all have to, like, right. go through the process of grieving and being angry, and then, right, in the seven steps or or stages of anger, it's, like, acceptance. Yeah. Um, acceptance I have, like, is 15 the stages of anger. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. like, acceptance is the summit of being yeah. on the road of, of healing, and I feel like, so I'm, I'm only going to speak based on my observations. Um, not from experience. Um, but I'm wondering if it could be that like you have to relate to your body in a different way, which means other people have to relate to you in a different way. And like when we moved from California to Hawaii, it like changed me. And so when I would go back to California to see my old friends and family, they related to me how I was before I moved. And, and yeah. so we lost some sort of like commonality or common bond or shared experiences. Um, and so it's kind of like that. It's like, how do we um, relate to ourselves in a different way so that other, so it opens the door so other people can relate to us in a different way. And I know like for me, self-acceptance, um, like it was a very clear defined line of my experience prior to self acceptance and and pro uh, like after self acceptance and like for me like i would say in relation to what tylio was saying because we were born with our disabilities going through mm -hmm. puberty is already hard then you add a, such a visual disability it's just like on steroids like just, let's just just escalate this um ex the whole puberty experience and so when all you're wanting to do is blend and and fit in and like wear the right same clothes as they're wearing, do your hair the same way they're doing it. And you're just trying to be somebody else to fit in. It doesn't, it, it, it it's like there's resistance. So the question was, how does self-acceptance affect our quality of life? So pre self-acceptance, it's just like, it was so hard and it was so like exhausting and, and, not satisfying at all and unhappy yeah. like it led to like depression <laughs> yeah and there's nothing yeah <laughs> right depression right. and thoughts of suicide and like you just want it to be over um See, i think that's also like the teenager experience right but then when you have to go through that again at the age of four i don't know how i think you said you were 40 um but you know when you're doing the going through that whole process again at an older age, it's so much harder because you already kind of went through it and you're like, oh, I'm on the other side. And then something like that happens where you lose an arm or like for me, I became, you know, I became paralyzed in the wheelchair. It's like, you got to kind of go through that socialization again. And it's, yeah. it's hard older. It's, I don't know, when you're a kid, 
you don't go through as much stuff. So you're like, oh, my life is horrible. Like, well, I, I, you know, whatever I want it to end or whatever you do when you're a teenager. But then when you're like older, you have to pay rent and be an adult and all these things. And then go through this like transition thing where you aren't living with your parents and people aren't taking care of you. Like you're taking yeah. care of you. But I think, but then pro self-acceptance, like after self-acceptance, it was like a definitive, like I was having lunch with a friend in college and I lived in the dorms and did the whole college experience. And I was very, she could see I was being very conscious about the way I was eating. And she's like, F them. Like who freaking cares? Just for like, it doesn't matter what they think. And it kind of made me switch. And I was like, what, what I can do that. And immediately yeah. who because I was able to accept myself everything about my experience changed right I was able to to it wasn't about me it wasn't yeah. it was about um I and knowing who I am then other people like and being solid in that people could could fit themselves into my life or not fit themselves into my life um and so that's I feel like that, that was a, I could see a stark difference between not being like my quality of life being ex affected by lack of self-acceptance and then being affected by self-acceptance. Um, and so, and, and then that's the thing, right? When people don't, oh, when you're not sure of yourself, people are not sure of you. Yeah. And so they're like tiptoeing or they're not really sure what to say. And oftentimes I can say like, I've had so many caregivers in my life. And, you know, and caregiving is not like, oh, let me help cut your food up. It's like, let me help you shower, you know, put your tampon in. Like, it's intimate. And so I can tell yeah. what their level of self-acceptance based on how they are interacting with me. So people who are very accepting of themselves and they don't really care about anything or anybody else, they're, they're very comfortable with the intimate stuff. But then the other people who are not, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm not doing that. I can't help you with your period. I can't do all that stuff with you, you know? Well, and it's like lack of compassion. You know, it's like lack of compassion for another human being. You but know, they're like, also... How can you, you know, like, how could somebody like, I don't care if I had 22 arms. You know, if I had a friend or somebody that, you know, I worked with or whatever, and you need to help with your tampon, I'd be like, shoot, you know, let's just get her done. <laughs> yeah, just get her done. You know, I mean, just. So Tanya, you know, you're my girl when I go in. You know? <laughs> but, you know, you just get it You're done not, and you just that's your go, problem. you know. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I and I really think that it's lack of compassion, but then I also think that it's, um how people raise their children you know i have and children i i for some reason i always watch children you know there's some children that are just freaked out you know and, and, and it doesn't matter maybe it's not parenting maybe it is but you know other kids are like oh wow what you know happened to your arm you know like they're not scared of it but then there's children that are just like freaked well, out I, and scared and cry you know and it's like Dude, I, you know, I mean, I just don't have an arm. I mean, it's not like I, you know, Freddy Krueger or something, <laughs> you know, but well, they seem to feel like that. I don't think it's necessarily a parenting thing because one of my best friends from college, like when we were in college, she was really into gothic, you know, she always yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, but, you know, now we're like older and she actually right before the pandemic got down to her parents because she's been really working hard because she explained it to me. It's like, yeah, my parents weren't really great parents and I want to go there and kind of teach them how to be empathetic to the world. And so mm -hmm. so she and she told me the story because she has a friend that's quadriplegic in England and um, she had a caregiver because you know you, you don't have bladder control you have to wear a, use a cap a catheter mm -hmm. and so she had a caregiver to put a catheter in for her and she's like oh but she didn't show up she goes I mean we can go out if you feel comfortable with doing it and my friend was like yeah just tell me what I gotta do and I'll do it for yeah. you so, out. 
and she had to go to the bathroom and she's like, and so I went in the stall and I had the catheter and she was telling me what to do and I didn't do it right the first, you know, so, but she was willing to like be that person. Yeah. Her friend could go, so they could go and out and do things, you know? So yeah, it's just people. Some people are just empathetic and some people learn empathy later in life. And I don't know I, if the empathy thing, I don't know how it, it, it grows in people. I, I'm not sure about that because I've seen people that have real, like my, I, I told Pauline, my brother and I are completely different. He's so not empathetic. So like he, I don't know, they went to the hospital and they found like a, a cyst on his liver. And so he's like freaking out. <laughs> he's like texting me, freaking out. And you know, I've been paying every day. And so <laughs> Rough for yeah, you're like, suck it up, sissy. And it would, be, <laughs> it'd be nice if he's like, Oh, how are you doing? You know, just checked in on me, but like, hey, how's it going? How are you doing today? But he never does that ever, ever, ever. And then when something happens to him, he's like, Priya, love, 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 this is happening, and that's happening, and that's happening. And I'm always like, Well, you know, it's okay, you know, and I because that's the type of person I am, like, I'm, yeah. I, I texting him like you're an asshole because you don't do this for me but i'm gonna do it for you <laughs> yeah nice thing Maybe yeah it's, it's that don't worry but then you know at the same time i'm like you dumb ass <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but i think that's where the compassion it goes both ways though right like we have to have compassion yep. that they're yeah. not where we are right, right and right. so i i feel like it goes both ways so i feel um bad when someone you know and, and I feel like as a person with a disability I've always taken it on to make them feel comfortable like I'll make a joke or or try to relax them somehow um that look it's all good we're all good and yeah and, I know and like what the hell you know it should be the other way around you know or I, I don't know way around but society, I gotta get something I'm gonna go get something to drink really quick but I can hear you okay okay so what society society it should be the other way around but really let's just face it society has set up these preconceived notions of when someone isn't quote unquote whatever normal means and normal is and then immediately if they see you in a wheelchair or they see you're different they don't know socially how they should act or and then I do think we're living in this super hyper politically correct environment so then people are kind of afraid of offending you so there's all these things going on in society that make people act that way so unfortunately the burden is put on us to make people feel comfortable it sucks but that's why I think the burden is put on us to do that yeah I I'd love I'd love to hear from Cecil and and Freddie and Jewel if they yeah. want to say anything too all right Come on. I, Come on. I'm just it's waiting. Funny. I'm I'm not shy. I I'm know just you're waiting. Not. Um, oh, I think he is. I think he's real shy. <laughs> he's been sitting there quiet. And he hasn't said a word. <laughs> he's a gentleman. He's a gentleman. All right. All right. I think. I think for me, you know, I was often hurt to. Um, I think I was in my twenty early twenties, and um. It's like a, a new disease that progresses over time, so it degenerates. So, you know, I slowly start losing um, you know, my hands. You know, I'm not able to, to write or have to use uh, a walker to walk. Uh, what do it's you a, have? It's a, and I still rebel a taxia. I'm going to have to get the dictionary out, <laughs> but well, go ahead. I'm well, just, I was just curious. I'm sorry to interrupt, but go ahead. Yeah. No, that's fine. It, what it is, is like it affects your coordination. And it also like ALS. Your, is it kind of like ALS? Some to that. Some to yeah. that. And it, it affects your, um, your, um, your balance. Your balance, your speech, uh, your fine motor skills, and you also develop muscle atrophy over time. So it's like so. Uh, 
when I became disabled, I had the thing in my mind that things would go back to normal with uh, the people, my family and friends that I was around, you know, and I was like, why are they changing? You know, so for 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 a long time, you know, I was a teen, you know, I was literally a teen, but who, I wanted people to know that I was still the same guy, but I'm, I'm changing. Are you still going to treat me the same? So I was like, to what people were saying, it's like I was trying to make them feel comfortable so that I can still be included. And uh, they get they get played out after a while. It does. I think you know um uh you have those thoughts, and it's like over a ten year period. Um, uh, I have my um self assessment, a self assessment, self assessment, and um 2018 I was 34. But between that time, I was like still trying to figure out how to deal with. It, you know, and I got this thing. Um, I'm not the same anymore. Um, and you and you go out your way for people that wouldn't go out for, wouldn't do the same for you. So you know, you develop um, depression, um, anxiety, suicidal thoughts. You're like, why me? I ain't do nothing to nobody. You know, it's just like I just can't understand that. You know, and you know, um, even I go to church, you know, but still, you know, it was still hard for me to grasp that, to grasp with that. Like, why is everything changing? And then, um, and then, you know, I always see people move on with their life, like, you know, get married, have kids, and whatnot. And I'm like, oh, there's including me to what I see so you have for you. In 2018, I said, you have to live for you. It's, it's either you or nobody. So it's like when I, I just say, hey, I want to live, you know, like like uh, what Tanya was saying. I said, hey, I want to live. Hey, you. it doesn't mean, mean that you don't get insecure. I think y'all do with some level of insecurity. But I'm like, I'm here too, and I'm gonna have the best damn ride of my life, you know. <laughs> Amen. Woo! <laughs> 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 I'm gonna have to care about the rest of the people. And it's like, I call it the, it's the reason why I call my my transformation the adventures of Cecil. It's like, Okay, so, so what else do you want to do? Okay, you did this. You you you've been um um uh, hang gliding, you know, dark. So it's like you open up a whole new world that you thought that was closed, you know. Hang gliding. Like, what? Yeah. You haven't been hang gliding, have you? <laughs> yeah, I have. I have. Oh, yes. Wow. I have. <laughs> yes, I've been. I've been scuba diving. <laughs> I've been adapted snow skiing. Cecil, I've been this skiing. His name yeah. is like oh <laughs> yes. it, It's like he's like the daredevil. Been, <laughs> yes, and it's like I had to put myself out there and not really give a damn what no one thinks to be in the Yeah, exactly. I, and I had to let go of a lot of things and, and let go of how I felt. Really how I put it, like I had to lose myself, who I thought it was, to gain who I really am. Yep. You know, and, and, and and it still with up perception and loving me. Uh, so I was like, hey, game on, they introduced me to um, a deficit sport, I said, what? I've been disabled for like 10 years. I'm like, hold on, what? They're like, do you like this? I'm like, I'm gonna do all of this. I'm gonna see what all you got <laughs> and go be me. Well, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like, um, in the beginning, we used to wait on people. 
to uh, include us or include us or invite us out. Now I'm like, I'm do with or without you. You know, that's right. That, yeah, that's, that's right. It's true. like, hey man, I'm I've got my party. I'm going to do what I want to do. If you guys want to come, you're more than welcome. And if not, I'll eat by myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, <laughs> yes. Yeah, you know, it's like I, yes. I'll be sure to post you some pictures so you can you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, you know, just tell my full pictures. You oh, know, yeah. it'd be good. Obviously, you have I'm no little... fear and just do not care. But you know, that's good. I mean, I I love and respect that so much. They, you know, why not? I mean, you know, and you kind of feel that way too. It's like, why shouldn't I do it? You know, like if I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. You know, I mean, I just kind of feel like uh, I've already. You know, done that thing, and I guess you know. I just want to, you know, live life and just be happy. You know, like who cares? Yeah. I don't think I'm gonna go sky gliding or whatever you did. No, I don't think I'm gonna do. That. I want to. I want to go skydiving this weekend. Next weekend, I I I do want to go skydiving. <laughs> just something, you know, just just try some new to stay here. That it, you know. Yeah. So it's like, I think, but it took me a while to get to that moment of step, step, and step. Yeah. You well, know, you know, and right. um, go ahead. And I, go ahead. Um, well, and then I stop caring what people think. Go they ahead. describe things in steps because it isn't. You can't from a to b immediately things happen over it's a process right it's like you gotta go through the process i mean we all want to not skip those steps because we'd like to get to the end where it's really great but unfortunately you can't that's not how life works you gotta go through the bad stuff and then get to the good stuff i think i or you know i don't know but not all but, of it you know oh, but ahead. you know really the you the unique part about it is that we've been through it. So it's yeah. like when other people go through stuff, like, hey, I can relate to you. You know, I can comfort you. You know, even when your world feels like it's crumbling. But like, hey, you know, it's like we have that great level of empathy, like um, Pauline was saying. But I think the biggest thing for me is that uh, that we can expect people to treat us the same way we treat them. I think that's when we, you know, you know, that's, I don't know, just, and then you have to express what you need from people. Well, you know, that doesn't ever change how you treat people. You know, like, even though they might not treat you good back, that just never stops me from being a good person to other people. You know, do you, I bet you your family finds a lot of comfort in coming to you or your friends or whatever, coming to you for advice. And you know what I mean? Like, let's ask, you know, like, let's ask Cecil. You know, <laughs> like, what will yes. Cecil say? You know, Cecil. I mean, you're probably like a pretty good comfort uh, person for a lot of people because you know of your situation and stuff so you know they probably want to hear your advice and what you know like well what would cecil do or you know or maybe that makes them better people to think of you and you know maybe be you know nicer i don't know i don't know what well, would I people nicer. <laughs> I'm upset with someone because they, you know, because I'm really nice and they're not, you know, they're not exactly acting the way I think they should. I'm always like, Priya, you are the person you are. You're really nice, empathetic, you care about people. And just because they aren't acting that way, whatever, you just keep being the person you are. Don't let them change yeah. the person you are. And that's, I, I always have to tell myself that because I do get mad. I'm like, come 
like, you know, with, I'll just use my brother as an example, but you know, I'm like, God, why, why can't he check in with me and blah, blah, blah. It's like, it's okay, Bria. That's just not the type of person he is. And maybe I do actually feel that my brother, I just felt like I got that empathy gene <laughs> for my parents and stuff. At, and my brother just never had it. My brother was like worried about being popular in high school and all this kind of stuff. And I just didn't care about stuff like that. So I think now in his life, he just got divorced and my parents both passed away. So I think he's kind of now growing into this person where he's understanding how to be more compassionate towards others because he's kind of experiencing some things that make him unhappy, you know, and I don't think feel like, go ahead. I feel like that often comes from a place of insecurity, you know? Oh yeah, no. Always oh, yeah. being wor worried about what other people think. And when you're insecure, it's really hard. It is all about you, right? It is hard yes, to like okay. empathize. Person, it's, I can't believe we're related. I'm like, oh my <laughs> God. I, don't I say the same thing about my sister. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, how are we related? But we are. And, you know, yeah. we just inherited different ways of doing things. Yeah. And maybe he was more popular and he was always accepted and I wasn't so that maybe gave me more empathy with things than him because he kind of always got things that came to him easily he didn't really have to work he's really you know he's really popular he's funny he's a really charismatic funny guy so people always like love him and think you know he's really funny and I do too like when he's in that mode I'm like oh my god <laughs> and I'm charmed by him as well but you know <laughs> Then I'm like, oh, wh why, why? But then, then I switch it. And I'm like, what's wrong with you? So, you know, he just always had things come easier to him. But now he's like 48. You know, his body's not doing that well anymore. He's not the good looking young guy that's very charming to all the women and people. And so now he's kind of hitting this wall of not being accepted. And perhaps it's humbling him a little and maybe I have to help him come to turn maybe I'm the person that's gonna help yes. him come to like you know to dealing with that well you know, the thing, one oh, sorry go ahead I just wanted to say that the one thing that I really absolutely hated about losing my arm was that you know I mean I like to lay low in my life and be private and you know but now I'm like in my area, you know, I'm like the one arm lady, you know, like I go to like parties and stuff, well, like uh, wedding receptions, you know, and people that I don't even know will come up to me and they'll be like, hey, so-and-so was looking for you. And, and I'm like, did they come up to you and ask you if you had seen the one arm lady? And they're like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> you know and I'm like hell no you know maybe I want to rob a bank one day you know what I mean just for fun and they're gonna be like oh she only had one arm but we all you know so it's just like you're you can't really get away with anything because you're like so obvious to everyone and it's like dude come on you know but it is it's just like that the uh, <laughs> I really oh, hate that. I, I you know, because I just want to be like down low and not notice, but now everybody sees me. Yeah, because disability does kind of rob you of your privacy on a certain level. Like, you know, Pauline's talking about caregiving, like doing these intimate acts that maybe you feel comfortable with, maybe you don't, and maybe the caregivers don't feel comfortable. And you know, it's like this weird social and navigating this whole other social aspect of life that, and Friday too, yeah. I know for like about caregivers, like you know, for him to be social, he needs a lot of, you know, he needs a lot of help to get out into the world. So it kind of cuts off his socialness, you know? So it's just like a lot of navigating we all have to do to, for privacy, being social. And it, yeah. it we're awesome. I'm telling you, we are really amazing. <laughs> well, fuck out. yeah. <laughs> well, fuck we yeah, it. we are. <laughs> we are, like, whatever that, that, I was, was it, who was, like, saying we're persistent? Was it Elizabeth Warren or something? And I was like, 
persistent. Let me tell you who's persistent. Women, sure, they're persistent, but disabled people are the most persistent group of Yeah, but you know what? And they're like the most knowledgeable people. I mean, like these, you know, like people that are disabled, you know, that the and especially since technology it's like well back up you know they're pretty smart they are way super smart you know especially you know and it, it's just like i've never known a i mean it's amazing you know what people that are you know that are are i don't know how to say it but you know what i mean it's just like well, everybody I, is so smart and on that computer like bam 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 you know they're like down with it and they're building groups and and you know they're advocating and and stuff like that and and they're being able to do that in their own home like they don't have to leave and go to the courthouse or they don't have to leave and go to a protest they can do it from their own home and i think everybody is making like a it's huge it's huge yeah. and go for it you know I definitely, rock yeah. the house yeah. <laughs> <laughs> rock the boat rock the house yeah That's right. yes. Exactly. yes yeah um freddie did, i saw you unmute yourself and then mute yourself did you want to say anything about self-acceptance i was just gonna say back to the caregiving part of it um since i grew up in a group home and we had a lot of turnover as far as um the workers that worked at the facility and whatnot. And I, I would ask them as a 13, 14, 15 year old person at the time, what made you want to do this type of job? Because I was just curious because it's so hands on. And they would be like, well, I grew up around disabled people or my mom did it or I have a disabled person in my family so what i'm going to say is the people that are more accepting to help those that are disabled they usually were exposed to it at a young age or like right. somebody that was disabled but if you're not exposed to it at a young age you're going to have more reservations about you know wiping yeah. somebody's bottom or you know something like that so that's what what i was gonna add to that yeah yeah that's so pretty yeah, i'd like to true. know i'd like to know um like what you think about subject self-acceptance like how long did it take you um like how how does it affect your quality of life it doesn't accept uh affect me physically but it does mentally because right. i require so much physical help and i'm hard on myself all the time because i'm like i wish i could go to the refrigerator and get me something to drink but yet i always have to rely on somebody else to give me something to drink and it's I have my good days and I have my bad days, but most days I cope with it. But some days it's like, really? I want to <laughs> be able to do something for myself, but, you know, it is what it is, unfortunately. Can I say something inappropriate? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I, <don't laughs> have to. I was going to say, <laughs> but what about the strippers? <laughs> <laughs> Put it back on there. Put it back on there. Put it back on there. What about the strippers? You could get a, you could probably call it, have a stripper delivered. Right. <laughs> Especially now during the pandemic. Let's see him again. Where did he go? I'm right here. With the oh, person, yeah. With the person that talks, it's the person that it shows the person that's talking at the moment yes well i just wanted to see what you said be, what you were doing because i'm like well what about strippers you could call them like you know like i think they have like a five two four you know five two four and they're at your door <laughs> right <laughs>
I feel like Tanya's everybody's girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I know that I'm just so bad, but I can't help it because it's just like whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, see, see, this, the scary yeah, part about too. this is she's a lot like me. I'm just <laughs> reserved on the on the <laughs> Zoom calls. <laughs> Cecil, <laughs> what were you saying, Cecil? I didn't hear you. Oh uh, yeah. Well, I, I'm just cheap enough to do thing features, and I think to add to Freddie is that we have to learn how to let people serve us, yeah. you know, because I think we all want to keep our level, our own level of independence. Yeah. We got this. But like sometimes, like, we need help. You no, know, I'm being honest, you know, I'm like, I don't, I don't want to ask people for help, but if they ask me, hey, can I help you? Sure. You know, <laughs> you know, because so really, someone um, told me this. I work at the YMCA part time. Someone told me this. She said, when you don't let someone help you, you are robbing them of their blessing. All right, yeah. I never thought about it like that. It's like, you know, they just want to contribute something to life, you know? Yeah. That's yeah, what I talked about yesterday. Sorry, go ahead, Priya. <laughs> well, well, that's what I'm saying with someone. It's true because, um, you know, when you go through life and you're just worried about yourself and not, because we're, we're really essentially humans are a community. We need to interact with each other. And this idea where we're like, no, this is my life. I need to be focused on myself and what I do, which I think is a thought that's like kind of grown. And I really think the pandemic is changing that a little bit. I think people are starting to understand like they need to connect with other people somehow because it's been taken away. And so, um, yeah, so for a person to, like, for, like, sometimes I'll be in the grocery store or somewhere and I need help, and I am not shy about asking for help, because if I need it, and I don't have any way to do it, and I'm fortunate because Robert is my partner, and usually he's with me, but if he's not around, and I can't be like, Robert, go get that thing for me, then I go up to excuse me, man. Can you grab that? And sometimes I don't want to go look for Robert and go find him at the grocery store. So I'll just ask yeah. the same. I'll be like, excuse me, I can't reach that. Can you grab it for me? And they'll be like, <laughs> and they're all like, oh yeah. And I always thank them. I'm always like super nice to anyone that helps me because I want them to understand that this is a positive experience when you're helping another person that can't do something. So and then no one's ever mean to me about it. They're like, oh, yeah, sure. And I was like, thank you so much for doing that to me. I really, for me, I really appreciate it. And even if someone's asking me if they can help me and I don't really need their help, I'm like, no, I don't really need your help. But thank you so much for offering your help. I really appreciate that. Because I think we need to teach humans that they need to ask. They need to stop and ask if someone needs help. And whether they're disabled or not, to be honest. So... That's like the way I kind of try to live the way when I out in the world doing things, yeah. you know, and meeting people. That's what I do. But I am not in the same position as Freddie where I do need some help sometimes, but you know, like, you know, I don't need as much help with Freddie. So I don't know if my mindset would be in the same situation if I did. I think it would be, but I don't know. I, I, I can't, I can't say if I was living Freddie's experience, how on board I would be with that thought process, but I think I where, would be. Where are you at, Freddie? You, you live in California, right, Freddie? No, in the Houston area. Oh yeah, Texas, that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they say everything's bigger in Texas. Including the strippers. Apparently. Never. Uh, 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 uh. Go Freddy. <laughs> well, I say go Freddy. Go right. Freddy. <laughs> Tanya, are you going to ask for a shoe size next? <laughs> yeah. Freddy, we want to know what size shoe you wear. 
<laughs> Actually, I don't know the size since I wear AFOs. <laughs> Oh my god! It just oh, made it bigger. Really? Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Now he wears like a sixteen and a half. <laughs> really? Yes. The play along, lady. I know, oh, yes. right? <laughs> <laughs> so I want to just make um, we have about I would, I'd say maybe 10 more minutes um, and I would love I don't know if I, I don't know if Jewel wants to um, share her thoughts um, but I also want to make sure Je I, Jessica I know you're the facilitator but I also want to make sure sometimes the facilitator gets well, a I texted Jewel today when I were talking and she wasn't feeling that good but I okay. told her I told her just to come and she didn't have to like talk if she Perfect. just wanted to. Okay, that's okay. That's cool. But I who does want to talk, she will probably <laughs> like and say something if she wanted to. So. Awesome. Okay. So I guess Jessica then, I, I, I know facilitators often get forgotten. So. <laughs> Oh, it's He's okay. moving to Texas. <laughs> <laughs> We're all coming to Texas, Freddie. I don't know about me, but yeah. Cecil's good where he's at. Actually, right. The reason, I guess, the reason why I wanted to talk about self acceptance is because that's something that I struggle with every single day. Um, Tanya, ex how you feel is exactly how I feel on a daily basis. Um, we're, you know, we're both amputees. She lost her arm. I lost my leg. Um, and that's probably like, so you get, you get to that point in your life. I mean, even even if you were able-bodied like me or, you know, Tanya or Priya, we got to that point in our lives where, you know, we were doing our thing, you know, working hard, paying our bills. We, we, we loved who we were, you know, we accepted who we were and then boom, tragedy. And then it, you know, you're just, you're set in such, you're set into such a spiraling tailspin. Um, and then trying to figure out, okay, what's my life going to be like now? Like, what does it look like? How am I, geez, my weather box is going off like crazy. That's why I kept disappearing because I keep, it's yeah, in my, and I keep <laughs> and you're like, seeing important stuff. <laughs> it just like, it keeps going off. But um, anyway. Oh, go ahead trying to basically you know trying to figure out who we are now that you know we we are paralyzed or missing the limb or you know and we have to we have to deal with that reality every single day i mean you, you know like me i just i go through the motions i try not to really feel anything because i've i've always been very empathetic. I've always, I've always been an empath. I mean, God, since I was a little girl. Um, yeah. and now that I've gone through this, it's at like, it's like, I'm even more sensitive than I was before. Um, so I feel things more deeply than I used to. And that's not necessarily a good thing. It's, it, it's like, a, yeah, it, it's a blessing and a curse. Yeah. Um, but now it just feels like a curse. So I, I, I wanted to hear from you guys, like how you dealt with, um, like your, your disabilities, how you got to that point. Because, I mean, Tony, you, it's been three years for you. It's only been two and a half for me. So we're not that far behind or we're not that far apart, but. So I'm going to tell you right now, just really quick. Maybe we should go get tattoos. <laughs> tattoos. <laughs> I have an idea for you, Tanya, because when you were talking about your arm and <laughs> you hadn't been, you didn't really have time to grieve over losing your arm. I think you should write something or make a spoken thing and name what your arm 
like saying, I'm, you know, I need to say goodbye, whatever you want to call call her, call her, uh, Betsy, I don't know. Be like, Betsy was good. This is what Betsy helped me do. And, See, and the crazy thing is, like, Priya, her and I are from the same amputee support group. It's for women only, and it's on Facebook. There's <laughs> women on there that, that name their limbs all the time. Or, you know, they name their prosthetic. Or, you know, so honestly, that that's not really surprising <laughs> that you said that. Yeah. But I just thought, you know, when she's talking about how she wasn't able, I mean, I, I'm sure people do that. That's just like a thing people do, you know, like they name their boobs or their private parts. They're like, my pretty, blah, 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 or Gina, <laughs> which I always just like, what is wrong with people? But in this situation, I think it would be like kind of a healthy thing to like kind of, think about your arm as like almost like as a person that you've lost because well, you know when you lose your limb at such a late age when you're used to using it all the Why time is it so it, choppy? it's so it is a loss you know it is the significant and for you too jessica like you know when you lose a leg or an arm i don't know for me like becoming i will share getting upset here I did want to take back my self-acceptance because the one area where I haven't was, it what? has work. And I actually, the, I had this job in the Bay area for this mortgage company. I was like signing up people to loans, but I didn't really like it. And their mo the mother had come in and she started a business where you needed to find uh, people that appraised houses and literally the, she called me and she knew I was having a lot of pain. It was difficult for me to come into the office and the office was not accessible at all. Like for me to get in the wheelchair, like I'd have to ask 10 people to move out of my way. Like they didn't even put a desk by the door. They were like, Oh, yours is back there. And I'm like, all right, well, all of you are going to have to move so I can get there. Like think oh. about what is wrong with these people. But then the mom like called me, called me and was like, oh, we're going to do this. We're going to get a job and you're going to work from home. And I want this for you and that for you because I know it's so hard for you. And I was just like, okay, cool. And I actually had a phone conversation with her about it. And I was really excited because someone was like recognizing I had a disability and was going to work with me in a way that could help me work. And I don't know. I think her son like talked to her after she talked to me and was like, no, <laughs> can't have people work home because they're ripped off by hours and, and oh, she, ow. she didn't even call me. She texted me and I consider this woman like a friend of mine because we became close and she just, she couldn't even tell me. She texted me. It's like, Oh, if you can't come in, you can't have the job. And I was like confused at that point. Cause I was like, so are you saying everything you said to me yesterday, you're taking, I didn't say it like that. I just said it more like, so what you're saying is now, if I can't come into the office, I can't have this job. And she said, yes. Oh, and I really, I was so upset. I mean, I don't really get upset and emotional about, oh, I didn't even get that upset and emotional when I had my spinal injury. Like everybody else was freaking out, but I was just like, whatever. This is what I got to deal with. Let's go do stuff. But that really like traumatized me about getting work. So I completely relate to what you're talking about. You had the jobs and you had already proved yourself. So I think it's even more psychologically traumatizing in a way, you know? So I totally understand where you're coming from with that. It, it like, it does hit your ego in, in a different way, not so much socially, but like the self-worth of being able to work and make money for yourself and pay your bills. Mm -hmm. So I think everybody's really missing out on, I think everybody's really missing out on um, uh, hiring disabled people because they have absolutely no clue what disabled people are capable of doing at home. Exactly. exactly. You know, I mean like, this group is so intelligent and like the posts that they make and stuff like that. I'm like, Oh, you know, what are they talking about that? You know, and I got to Google stuff and you know what I mean? And it's just like, 
you know, you, you've received a gift of, you know, having technology, you know, and technology is, but you know, why wouldn't people, why wouldn't people want to take advantage of that? You know, I mean, well, and I, I don't really understand, you know, and then I think a lot of people, you know, they rely on, you know, like the sheriff's office, you know, oh, it's what you look like. You know, I was never good enough for the, you know, little whoop de will And um, it's like, it doesn't really matter what I look like. You know, I'm a yeah. great business person. You know, business is business. Whether you're ugly or pretty, business is business. You know, that's, that's just a simple thing. But I think Freddie keeps thinking about what I was saying earlier. <laughs> <laughs> how can i get those strippers freddie what are you thinking about <laughs> no i wasn't thinking about that i was just listening to the conversation <laughs> <laughs> you were too <laughs> i am totally geeking out right now <laughs> wow well, hey, hey you oh, got yeah. someone to ask them yes cecil <laughs> okay cool it's like with this good thing, like uh, I have my day too. So what helps me is if I focus on something else or someone else, and focus yeah. on more on what I have. You know, uh, I may not be able to walk like everyone else, but like it, there's something unique about me that I can offer the world. That's kind of how I kind of tweak my mind to uh, think. I'm a good writer. You know, I like to write inspirational stuff. You know, people love it. You know, it just. I love it. I, I always uh, like the clothes, man. Yes, you saw. <laughs> and, 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 and you know, you just have to find your uh, creative side. Right now, you know, I know this is your downtown, but it's like for me, I have to dig deep and find out what I like to do with my purpose, what work and with with that and and uh, how to do a monetize it, you know. Yeah, it is. It's us, but you know, just have to do with it the best we know how. Yeah. And I, I'd like to, you know, there's a saying that things don't happen to you, they happen for you. And so, you know, the, um, the perspective that you now have, Tanya and Jessica and Priya and Cecil, you know, like all of you've been gifted a different perspective. I don't know if you were thinking about, huh, why don't we hire more people with disabilities in this police station before? Yeah, you know, um, we we don't know if we were felt. I mean, I know that you mentioned Cecil or or someone said it's a ble oh Jessica, it's a blessing and a curse to feel things more deeply, right? It is. Yeah, and it yeah. is. And 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 can we focus like what Cecil said? Well, and and you you're what you were asking Jessica is what what how do we cope with it? Um, and it's like, okay, what can I choose to focus on? And knowing that I get to choose, you know, Freddie, I totally get what you're saying. Like, sometimes I'm like, why can't I just shower the way I want to shower when I want to shower? And you just get so frustrated. It's always the littlest things that make you so frustrated. Like I drop a pencil. I'm like, oh my gosh. And it's just me too. I drop something on the floor. I'm like, God damn it. I know. <laughs> and it's like the world just imploded. Right. Robert, Robert, yep. Robert, my partner, who's actually much more stressed than me about most everything else in life, like I'll drop a pen and I'll be like, my God. And he'll be like, it's okay. I'll get it for you. I'm like, whatever. You don't <laughs> understand. Really <laughs> exactly. But you know, it's, it's like, what can I control? Like I have to get over it. Like you have to just, it's all a mental game. Like no matter how we are, each of us are, are affected physically, it's different for everyone. It's all about the mental, right? And I feel like that's how it is in the COVID. I said from the beginning, this is a mental game now, guys. It's like survival of the fittest. It's all going to be up here. <laughs> well, speaking of the you know, COVID, I, 
I just up- feel like I want to help you guys more than, you know, like, Jesus. I feel like I, you know, like, why am I, why am I even saying anything about being disabled? You know, like I'm able enough to help somebody who is truly disabled. You know, like I am able enough to help someone that needs my help. You know, I mean, you can do a lot with one hand, you know, but, and I've, but I don't ever, you know, cry about it or anything, but it's just like, I just feel like there are people out there that are truly disabled, that truly need help. And, um, you know, I'm good. But I feel like it's okay to feel the feelings. Like I allow myself to go there, right? Get all ugly well, crying. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's like, <laughs> yeah. We're all- we're human. We feel sad about our situation. I mean, there's people that are non-disabled that, you know, get upset about something and it's okay to be upset. You got to be upset because, you know, and keeping feelings inside that are making you upset is, it's just not good. It makes you more angry and bitter and not, you know, not like saying positive thinking, but it doesn't, you yeah. know, it doesn't progress you more forward. You're kind of just stuck in this, like, which happens to disabled people a lot because, you know, yeah. hard for people to kind of push past it. And that's why we're all awesome because we're going to help others push past it. I just like really like people are really looking towards us. You know, like we have to kind of be their voice. And that catalyst for the people that may not have a voice that deal with uh, dis- a certain disability. You know what I mean? Like uh, bring about inclusion in workplaces, in the adaptive sports, or, you know, in working areas. You know, uh, you know we have to make our voices heard, you know what I mean? And not just like, oh, oh, we'll just give you, we'll give you just a little bit. That's all we have, you know, in our budget that we will allow you. Well, we need to come up with a solution about what we want. Diesel, I will tell you that my voice is so loud Cause I'm yeah. a loud person. No matter who, like, you know what I mean. I'm just loud. So I'm on your side, and I am a loud voice. <laughs> so don't no worry. She doesn't need a, a megaphone. <laughs> That's right. I don't. Cause I'm just loud. Even if I try to whisper, I'm still loud. So I I also feel like the COVID nineteen crisis <laughs> actually helping disabled voices come more forward because disabled people are like yeah you wouldn't let us work from home you the medical care system isn't helping us all these things now everybody's experiencing these things because now most of my friends like i have a friend that works for nike he's working from home every day and he he's a web developer and he was kind of bummed because nike kind of made him keep going into the office and i was talking to him last night and it's like so what you know, what do you think they're going to do when this stuff opens up? And he's like, I don't know. My boss was like, no, I don't like people working from home because they're not going to work as hard. But now because COVID-19, everyone's working from home. He's like, oh, people are getting stuff done. We're productive. We're actually more productive. So like it's making people realize that letting people work from home and kind of accommodating and I don't want to even use the word accommodating, but working with people with disabilities because they yeah. have uh, a disability that, you know, that uh, keeps them from being able to do what everybody else is doing. And, um, yeah. you know, so to like have empathy and thought and then giving a person a job. It, it's but, you know, like, our brains and our thoughts are just the same. Yeah, 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 exactly. exactly. That's you know what I mean? Like, like just because, like, our body is different does not mean that, that doesn't mean okay. anything. 
always telling people I have a spinal injury, not a brain injury. So please. Yeah. You know, and it, exactly. And not exactly. that even brain injury is bad. People that have brain injuries are actually really capable too. They just have a little. They are. They like, are. They're just. And like, you know, a lot of people yes. brain I know they're like saying things that people are like, what? They're sweet, so mean. Well, like, more or less, they're like being like, I'm going to kill you. Yeah, but they never follow through. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I have a brain injury. I just have uncensored, unfiltered thoughts that I can't filter in. <laughs> well, you I know, just, my dad had a brain injury from the military, but, you know, it was never recognized or whatever. But it's like, and I didn't know about it until I was like 30. Yeah. And, yeah, exactly. um, cause he, because he had a spinal cord injury and I'm like, and he was I, in the hospital and he tells me about that. And I'm like, oh my I God, did. my whole life made sense. After he told me that he had a head injury, I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. Now it all but makes sense. I had a little bit of a head injury, but it, it wasn't, it didn't, I don't have like the emotional filtering thing, but it, you know, I had trouble reading, yeah. writing and stuff, but I still do it. I still write. Yeah do it and I'm kind of like writing I'm like what is this does this even make sense and luckily I have friends that read it and be like oh yeah it was good I just changed this and that and I highlighted in red make sure you're okay with it and so you know it's just like you just have to just because you have trouble doing things you can do it you just have to figure out how to do it and that's it yeah, and no that's worries patient and my pain and all these things it does keep their obstacles for me doing things, but I figure it out. I DIY. No worry. <laughs> DIY abled, and the reason I say that is the disabled community has to figure out how to do it for themselves, and so, and I'm very proud of that. <laughs> proud of us all doing it for ourselves. So. Yeah. I still think Freddie's <laughs> thinking about what I was talking about earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie is Freddy. also. Stop it, Freddie! Stop it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Freddie can have a private moment because we we do have to close out. <laughs> um, uh, so, Jessica, I don't know if you want to. Uh, I do. You know what? I do have to talk about something um, that's not on this topic about next week. Um, but I want Jessica okay. to complete this part of the call. If you'd like to do that first. Oh, I leave the call first? No, 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 no. Do you want to complete, complete this part of the call? Like any conclusions or the final words you want to say about your topic? Go for it, girl. Um, I'm sorry. Like, I'm for like the last 15 minutes, I've totally been geeking out because I'm a total weather nerd. So I'm like watching <laughs> the storm roll in, straight line wind, 65 miles an hour, watching the trees bow and like... <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm not, I'm there, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm trying to do two things at once here. Um, I really appreciate everybody that's come on the call today to hang out with me and, you know, talk about self-acceptance. I sound like a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> there is one thing that I did want to add. Um, because you were talking about, Priya, you brought up about Tanya's arm and, you know, like doing something to help with the grieving process. Um, I was in therapy after I lost my leg. I was in therapy for almost two years. I really need to get back into it. But um, with COVID, um, one thing my therapist did tell me, and it's crossed my mind, but it sounds so ludicrous. Um, <laughs> it's to basically it's okay. like hold, hold a funeral for my leg or like hold a, hold like a, yeah. a, a, a funeral for your arm. I mean, it's cause in a way it is like we lost someone, but this is where the, it, it's different. You lost a physical part of yourself. Therefore the pain is deeper. But than dude, losing. they're going to try to charge me like 1500 bucks just to have a ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> well no i'm an artist so i'm all like, I'm all like make it into a because it was such a great arm you know <laughs> just for a funeral for your leg jessica and a funeral for your and it will be free 
no charge. Yeah. We'll have a funeral, <laughs> funeral leg in your arm. I think it's a great, I think it's a healing process. because I want a limo to carry my arm to wherever. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I, it's I, probably I, I, been incinerated by now, but. Yeah, I know. I think mine has too. <laughs> what a casket in an open casket viewing for your arm. Yeah, well, we yeah. Arm. We can make an arm to represent your yeah, arm. Yeah, we could put like, we could make, you know, like. What would you call it? Like a pseudo arm? <laughs> you know, and and, and I hey, don't. You can I, have a glow for me for your arm. What, Cecil? We can have a go find me. A go you find know, me for your. Arm. <laughs> we'll have a go find me. Like we need a replacement arm. Dude, that's <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> how about how about a go find me? Oh, <laughs> yeah. good one. <laughs> mache arm and mail it to you i i do paper mache so i could paper mache <laughs> arm yeah we could paint it and make it cool looking for whatever no, I, I think the laughter <laughs> laughter is a big healing you know if you can laugh and it just you know laughter is what will keep us alive and keep us going it's just yeah that's what exactly. you know like you exactly. should watch pauline's youtube uh, cha uh, uh, uh chair chats i'm like <laughs> oh, chair chats chair chats wheelchair <laughs> pause who i'm gonna actually talk to on monday because he's a spinal cord injury so i'm all like oh my god i want to talk to that guy because i i like talking spinal cord injury stuff with yeah. people so, my dad had a spinal cord injury too yeah, yeah, you're telling me that. So yeah. see, your yeah. feelings been around, but Jessica, I do feel, I, I, I feel what you're saying. Like it's, you know, because there will always be a reminder, right? It'll always be there. And I exactly. guess you know, again, I can't speak from experience, <clears throat> but what made you you, and has that changed because you lost something? Is the essence of Jessica, the essence of Tanya, has that changed? And you don't have to answer it now, but just. I, I was just going to say, I'd say it has. Um, parts of me are still there. I mean, the sarcasm, the smart assness, mm. the goofy, the, you know, um, my, you know, my other care, my other characteristics of, I'm, I'm a very loyal friend. I like when she got me, you got me and it's for life. That's the kind of that's probably yeah. just horrible. <laughs> Sometimes that's yeah, probably thing ever. Yeah, <laughs> my mom would probably agree with you if she was here. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, um, I had to figure out and I'm still trying to figure out who I am without it. I mean, I may have a prosthetic, but it's just a tool. It's metal and plastic. That's all it is. It's not, it's not flesh and bone and muscle and nerves. And, you know, it's, I can't feel anything. But you know, and honey, all I have, I just, I'm sorry. I don't want to interrupt you, but I just want to say that, you know, okay, I'm 47 years old. You know, I'm like, what am I going to be when I grow up? Or who am I going to be? Or what do I really want to do? Or what's my calling? Or what's my, you know, you just feel empty without that. And it's like, I don't even know. Still. You know, it's like you can do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. Move on to that one. If it doesn't work out, move on to the next one. If it doesn't work out, move on to the next one. That's what life's all about. It's about picking up the shit in the yard. Right. Now you're always going to have a yard full of shit. You just pick it up and you move on. You know, you just move on and you go on to the bigger and better things. You know, it's just, it's yeah. really hard to figure out who you are and, and why you are here on earth. Because I feel like I'm here for a purpose, but I have no idea what that purpose is. You know, I mean, it's... Right but you have to keep searching. And the thing is, is that when you stop searching for that, 
then you're just, you know, you're just one of those right. people. You know, you're not well, a I, sheep. You're a lion. Think, yeah, and I think the fact that we're all even here on Crypt Chat shows that we are still searching and figuring things out and trying right. to connect with people that relate to stuff we're going through because most of the world doesn't, you know, and so... Right. That's yeah, I mean. And they're just judgmental and, you know, it's just like, you know, this lady that fired me, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to talk about myself, but I just want you to say that, I just want to say, you know, a few things that she was like, well, we followed the letter of the law. And I'm like, so I kind of looked it up and researched uh -huh. it and there is the letter of the law. But then there's also the spirit of the law, you know, or like if you follow, if you follow the letter of the law, which, you know, that's really pretty hard to do. You know, the spirit of the law is like something that's in your heart and soul and that, you know, what's right and what's wrong, you know, and that is what we are here for. That's really the spirit. That law. The letter of the law is a disconnection from the spirit of empathy is really what that woman's telling you. But you know, the letter of the law is constantly changing. It's never the same. It's always changing, you know, but the, when you have the spirit, you know, just the spirit of being a loving, caring, compassionate, giving person. There you go. And I think uh, that's why know, that wins it all. Yeah. And I feel like that's <laughs> Jessica, right? Like, yeah. And, and Tanya, like your, like your, our bodies are the letter of the law. Like this is the way your body's supposed to look like. Yeah. And it could ever change. It could not walk one day. It could, it could lose an arm another day. Right. It could bump the head another day. But the spirit that's within that container that doesn't change. That's that. There you go. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I feel like I feel like if I met you without the leg, Jessica, you probably wouldn't be very different from what you are today. Yeah, I think Tanya and Jessica would be exactly the way they are, even if they had their arm and their leg. And me too. If I could, if I could, wasn't paralyzed, I could walk. Uh, I'd be the but same. See, too. Jessica can be my but not arm, the same. I, and I could be her leg. Well, that's what I'm saying. So the like, you know, going back to well, what get the I, hell over here. We'll trade shit. <laughs> Let's so, do it. <laughs> what Colleen was saying. So our spirit is still there, but our disability is giving us a different perspective on life, and it's kind of hard at first because you're going through this emotional. So you know, like this. I'm not really into this seven step thing. Like I, I don't like to define things as steps i'm more like it's like a transition so right now you're in this transition this emotional transition where you're emotional about what has happened to you which i understand but then you gotta i mean i've been disabled for 21 years now so i'm like totally like yeah let me go out and do this and do that i'm gonna go here but of yeah, course you no. you've had time to live that life you yeah, know, you've so had time to live that life in your wheelchair and you know, right. you know, from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed, what life is like, you know, the obstacles that you have to face and things like that. Whereas, you know, but I mean, I, I, think, I think it's a, it's a little different. <laughs> what? I get pissed off. I'm still like, if something's not accessible or someone just doesn't get it, I'm like, God. What is wrong with that person? Don't say yeah, yeah. I mean, if I'm not saying like you know, yeah. You're still an emotional person. Yeah, like you drop something and you get mad at yourself because you drop I something. How to not let my emotions prohibit me from enjoying life? And that's what I'm trying to figure out right now because I'm that's such there. an emotional person. It takes, t yeah, and you're emotional too. You're an emotional person. So it just takes time to get to that, I think. And, and I that's think like a lesson for people that are disabled later in life have to, I, I think people that are born with their disability kind of come to terms with that earlier in their life because 
they're living with it and it's they they don't you know they they don't have to get used to having a body that wasn't disabled to to having the disability they have they just kind of learn to live with the disability as they grow up whereas we have that period we become disabled and then we have to learn how to live the, the disability later in life and we've already kind of set our you know we've kind of figured out our life a little bit with jobs and stuff and then you know when you have a disability it's just not this i mean when i before i was disabled i could go anywhere and get a job like that was like i'm an artist a musician i have no plans on having a career like you know i would just go to retail places and i had no problems getting i was always getting jobs like robert had trouble getting jobs and he would get always frustrated because I just be like, blah, 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 I'm nice. And they'd be like, oh yeah, we like this girl, we'll hire her. But since I've been disabled, it, yeah, I, it's so hard for me to get jobs. So I just, you know, make my well, own. You would, think, you would think that everybody needs a disabled person in their, you know, like, I always just imagine like, okay, well, you know, it was hard to get a job, not disabled, but now that I'm disabled, everybody should be like, oh, yeah, we'll hire you, you know, because you're disabled. You know, it's just like having a, um, uh, well, what do they call it, like, uh, minorities. You know, it's like, damn, a disabled person should, you know, trump a minority, you know, but. Well, because a minority can be disabled. <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> like I feel like amputees yeah, but are a big. It's like oh, here I'm brown girl. Part of a minority. Oh, we're part a of a minority now. black. You know, we're all minority. And another thing that I feel is that I feel like it's like, isn't this like our month? You know, like isn't this like disability month? And it's yeah. like, Pride well, month. where is? I haven't seen anybody like be celebrating that well disabled people are the only ones that are celebrating it's everyone's like black lives matter which i love black people so i have nothing against black lives matter but i'm yeah, like but it's like it doesn't really matter guys disabled lives matter too what's going on here yeah and and this is the you know like disabled people it's like it definitely doesn't matter about any color any you know what i mean nothing you know it's just like oh. we're disabled and it's like Okay, this is our month. What? No, I always write when people are writing about Black Lives Matter. I was like, the disability, and actually, um, at this, there's this Crip Camp webinar that happens every Sunday. And uh, two weeks ago, Barack Obama was the special guest on it. And yeah. he just oh. said, one, well, I was just like, you know, I'm not, I don't get fanfare over presidents. I'm not, I, and my friends are like, oh, Barack Obama. And I'm like, Oh, I like him. He's so much more pleasant to listen to. But um, he was like, he said, he's like the disability rights movement. He was talking about the Crip Camp era. And he's like, he goes, that was the most amazing. That was like one of the most important civil rights movement in America because it involved everybody. It wasn't one race, one gender. It was everybody got together and made that happen. And so he, he actually said like the disability rights movement is the mo one of the most important movements in America and I was like yes well, like, duh. you know so yeah so that's why you know I'm not like a Barack I'm not like a I'm not like a I don't I'm not a fan of anyone really so you know Man, I mean I, I would have known that Barack Obama was gonna be on there I'd be I would have been freaking out <laughs> I can't. I'm, I'm serious. I'm such a huge fan of him. Well, you know, first of all, I think that Jessica is probably going to get me in jail. <laughs> Jessica needs to, you know, she's like going to get me in trouble because she's not very far away from me. And I'm like, oh, I can just see it now. I'll be driving to Iowa City and, oh, he's going to get me thrown in jail. Oh, my That's God. That's okay. And I'll bring bond money. <laughs> then you'll be the one-armed lady in jail. <laughs> yeah, I'll bring bond money. It's cool. <laughs> you yeah. can do a go to raise the bail. Be like, look, I got one arm and they put me in jail. 
Oh shit! Yeah. We got a tornado yeah. warning. <laughs> yeah, oh my that'll be like, oh my gosh, they uh, cuffed yeah. one arm. Yeah. Well, anyways, yeah. Okay. Well, I think the tornado is letting us know it's time to go. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll see Jessica, you later. Stay, Jessica, stay safe, you guys. Oh, and then, um, okay. So whoever can stay on real quick, um, I'm going to put this on stop. Thank you everybody for, for participating in another beautiful crypt chat.